All right, guys, I am here with the one and only Joe Bradley. He, uh, he teaches in All-Stars for us. And he does some stuff in 912 and 78. Um, he helps those guys keep their heads on straight. And today he is here with us, Coronacation peeps, um, to talk about this crazy coronavirus. What's up, Joe? How's it going, Andrew? Oh, you know, doing the homeschool thing and uh, trying to keep my head on here while you're at the hospital yes. trying to save all of us from getting <laughs> sick. So I got some questions for you. You good for that? Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right, so uh, we got a bunch of kids at home that are probably have a lot of things on their mind. And uh, so we came up with some questions that we think that they're asking. So we'll see. Can you tell us what is the coronavirus? Yeah, so let's back up even a little bit more than that and just talk about what a virus is to begin with. So, you know, a virus is it's a very, very tiny kind of germ. It's way smaller than anything you could ever see. And viruses, they, they can make us sick. But when you look at a virus, they don't do anything on their own. They have to live inside of something to actually make it to where they can do anything. So what they do is they get inside of our bodies and then inside of our cells. So when we're talking about the coronavirus itself, it's called corona because crown means in another language, um, it's called Latin, uh, crown is corona. And the actual coronavirus looks like it has a crown because it has all these little spiky little spikes all around it to make it look like it has the crown on it. And it uses those actual spikes to attach to our cells in our, inside of our body. And that's how it gets inside of our body. And so the coronavirus itself is a virus that's been around for a long, long time. If you've ever had a cold before, you've probably had coronavirus before. So what's special about this one is that it actually started out, we think, in, in bats. It um, started to infect them, and then it went to a different animal. We don't know what animal yet, but it went to a different animal and then now it's um, being able to infect humans. And when it crosses from an animal to a human, our bodies don't have any kind of natural defense to it. Mm. And that's why it's gotten to be a lot worse for us. And so when usually when people get sick with the coronavirus, they have a very bad cough, they feel really, really tired, they have a fever. But the real danger for these is for the older people and people that already have medical problems. Um, this virus can do a, a lot of a lot of bad things for them. Gotcha. So, if it's more for the more for the older people, then why did they cancel school? And why am I having to stay home? All, you know, every day. It's been a month now. So mm -hmm. why why am I having to stay away from all of my friends? Well, when you look at it that way, our bodies have a really good way to fight infections, um, even more than just coronavirus. Anytime we get sick or get bacteria inside of our body, we have the, like, it's kind of like an army inside of our body, and we call it our immune system. So when the virus gets inside your body, your immune system starts to fight, and that's when you get the symptoms like runny nose, a fever, a headache, anything like that. Um, and what we do to protect ourselves is one we wash our hands always washing your hands is one of the most important things because this virus in particular has to get inside of our inside of our body and it uses a door kind of like your mouth your nose and your eyes so uh, if you had something on your hands and you touch that part of your face it gets inside of your body so when it infects someone like us that is pretty healthy um, i know i'm a little bit older than all the all-stars and four five sixers out there but even my body would have a really really good chance of fighting it but the thing is that we have a special role kind of in protecting other people around us and that's really why we're having to do this um, isolation stay at home do all these things because people like our our grandparents they they really need our help to stay to stay healthy um, and it sometimes means that we have to skip activities, you know, not being able to go to school. Um, doing this is what protects everybody else around us. Because even though we could fight the virus and get sick, 
if we go to school or go to a birthday party or go to any kind of parties with our friends and hang out, we could get sick and then take it to other people and get them sick. And so that that's really the reason that we're having to stay at home, not because this is like some kind of super virus that's going to hurt everybody that it comes in contact with, but just so it can keep it from spreading so quickly and keeping people that we love the safe the safest i got gotcha. you you know that goes uh really goes well with what we're learning about this month it's humility it's just about putting others first you know before what we think we deserve right and so um you know the best way that we can serve others right now is by really not being around them and 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 helping them uh stay safe right. if i'm and understanding it, it you right a- yeah yeah, and it is a sacrifice because nobody wants to stay home for 30 yeah. days, yeah. not being able to go out to eat and, and doing all these things. But like you said, it, it's the humility part of it and thinking of others before we think of ourselves. So you mentioned washing hands. Um, well, what are some other healthy habits that we can start to put into place to, to so try always, to help us stay better or stay well? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, these things are, are things that you can do all the time, but eating healthy, making sure you eat good foods, um, fruits, vegetables, drinking lots of water, uh, those kind of things. Another so thing not pizza is, and macaroni and cheese. and Those are okay every now and then. But um, another thing is uh, really important is to cover your cough or when you sneeze. So it's more than just you don't want to cover it with your hand. You want to do that for the, you know, the vampire sneeze. Mm. Do that kind of sneeze or cough if you feel that coming up. And then once you cough or sneeze, washing your hands. Um, and just taking good care of yourself. Get outside and play. You get, you're still, you still can get outside with your family, play some activities. Um, me and my boys have, have played some soccer together, uh, keeping them in practice. They been playing amongst themselves and trying to think of games even to play by themselves to do something to keep your body healthy yeah that was actually my next question is what's some things we can do in the meantime and uh soccer's good I, yeah. we have been riding our bikes a lot um, around oh, yeah. the neighborhood um, playing a lot of ball outside um, we've been trying to teach some games on coronation things they can do on saturdays but man it's really it's really been pretty outside so just you know getting outside and playing is it's pretty fun oh yeah so what do you think you know once once we uh get back to normal if we get back to normal um what's going to be different do you think anything will be different well when we think about getting back to normal we have to think about how long it's going to take to get back to normal um and that's a question like literally everybody has no one knows how long it's going to take us to get back to normal um some people seem to think that once the weather gets warmer it will lessen the effects but one of the biggest things we're looking for is the um looking for a vaccine so a vaccine is like when you get the flu shot every year it helps protect you against the flu and it doesn't always keep you from getting the flu but it helps to protect um and make it to where the flu isn't as bad so once we get a vaccine, I think that's when we'll get more back to normal that we've always known. But that could even last, you know, it, it could be a year until we get to that kind of normal. I think in a few more months, we will start to be able to go back to some um, restaurants and be able to eat there. But we'll have to be more mindful about getting too close to people and really being able to again take care of ourselves and thinking of others before ourselves so if we're sick if we feel like we're getting sick then we need to make sure that we stay at home um we need to make sure that that when we're in contact with other people we're very respectful of them and their space and not getting into their personal space and and getting too close to people um so normal will be a little bit different for a little while um, until we can get that vaccine and then I think everything will get more more back to the way we it used to be gotcha so how do they make a vaccine so 
you remember those little hooks I was talking about, the, the crown yep. that they have? Since that's the way that the virus gets inside of our cells, what they actually do is they take some of these viruses and they let them die. So when the virus dies, they still have those little spikes on them. And those spikes are what not only lets the virus in our body, but lets our body's immune system know what to attack. So our immune system starts to learn what those spikes look like and what they feel like. And then they, uh, our bodies produce little other little cells called antibodies. And so when these antibodies know what they need to look for, then they start to being able to attach to that virus and makes our immune system to where they can actually, um, well, in reality, our immune system eats the virus. We have these big, big white blood cells called macrophages that actually once those antibodies attach to the virus, they can eat the virus. So we can take those dead viruses that have those spikes and then inject them into our body. That won't make us sick because there's no actual no virus in it, but it has those spikes. And our bodies see those spikes, it can attach to those spikes and start to make those antibodies. And so if a virus like the coronavirus does come into our body, we already have that defense in place and it will immediately be able to kill the virus. That's pretty cool. So our bodies are fighting for us. That's right. pretty cool. Yeah, and, and when we get sick, a lot of times we think that it's the virus that's making us sick, but it's our body that's fighting the virus that makes us have the runny nose and the sneezing and the coughing because as it's killing those viruses, we need to get rid of it. So we have to cough it up. We have to sneeze it out. And... Um, that's what's making us have those symptoms that's pretty cool man that's pretty cool so um to wrap this up uh how can we as a um you know as a coronation group as people that are meeting at home and just chilling at home and uh, praying for our church and stuff how can we pray for you how can we pray as you know as a group for healthcare workers well, there's lots of people, and not just healthcare workers, but, you know, everybody that's considered essential. I know a lot of people have heard that, that term thrown out there, but to keep the world going, we need lots of people working. We need people in the grocery store. We need people, you know, at the gas stations. And here at the hospital, we have nurses, doctors, um, people running the labs, people cleaning the buildings, even maintaining the buildings. And so really the biggest heartache that we have as, as essential workers is that a lot of times we, we come into these situations not knowing who or what is, is potentially infected and that could get us sick. And so not only are we fighting for our patients and to take care of the people around us, but we're, we're also fighting the fear of if we get sick, that's a risk I, I've always known I, I, I can take as a nurse, but then how to, my biggest fear is then taking it to my family. So um, as far as prayer for the essential workers, I would say pray for, for us to be not fearful, not, my, not having a mind of fear, but, but trusting in God that he's going to protect us and he's going to just take care of us in the best way that, that we know how. Awesome. Well, thanks, Joe. Uh, Coronacation, you heard how you can pray for everybody, I mean, for all the people that are essential. And, you know, you can even pray for those people that are staying at home right now. Um, but, Joe, we thank you so much for joining us today and, uh, you know, telling us a little bit about this craziness that's going on, this coronavirus. Thank you for having me. I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody from All Stars or 456 in a while. And I know everybody misses me, right? Oh, I, I do. I definitely do. <laughs> All right. Well, well thank let's you so get much, back to Andrew. work. Yeah, man. We'll see you later. All right. See you.